Hello, everybody, and welcome to Steins Gate. Uh, this is the true ending. Um, I will go back and do Kudosu's ending and see if there's any, if there's enough differences uh, to upload it. But I wanted to do the true ending first because I heard that it had a lot of the Kudosu scenes in it anyway. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, but here I am. It's right after it had just started raining and uh, Kudosu had stitched up uh, my thing. And uh, last time I whispered into her ear, um, it was about Maori and how I was freaking, I was like, okay, or something like that. But now I say I won't give up ever, which is crazy. So let's, uh, let's begin. Kudusu suddenly pushes me away. She steps back. Her face is hidden behind her hair. But her fists are trembling. Her body exudes, exudes raw fury. This is ridiculous. You motherfucker. Whoa. <laughs> oh, dude, you totally said the same thing. You said I was fine. What do you mean you won't give up? Are you stupid? Want to die? Are you trying to be a hero? You Chunibyo whack job? Don't make promises you can't keep. Your stupidity is inferior. Uh, why can't you just do as I say? I... What's the problem, huh? If you weigh the options logically, saving Mayori is the only... Fuck logic. Damn. Kudusu stares at me in shock. I'm not God. Maybe I got close, but that's not me. I can't decide who lives and who dies anymore. Suza. Ferris. Lukaku. I sacrificed their happiness to save Maori. And the whole time, a voice in the back of my head was asking... Is this really okay? That's true, actually. What gives me the right? This time. This time I want to save both of them, without sacrificing anyone. Hmm. Chrissy turns away with a frown, then starts tapping her foot in a clear gesture of displeasure. There's nothing you can do. It's the choice of Stein's gate. Isn't that what you always say? The equation is proven, Okabe. There's no escape. You're just one man. No matter how hard you try, you can't overcome the will of the universe. I know. But I'm still going to try. I won't lose Maori or Kudasu. I mean... You have to lose one of them, dude. I hear Kudusu grinding her teeth. Then she turns her back on me. Or to me. Have it your way. But I'm not helping. I'm going back to America and that's that. Uh, goodbye. I don't expect we'll meet again. Hoin Kyoma. I can't believe this. How stupid can you be? You're so stupid. Kudusu disappears down the stairs, muttering insults until I can no longer hear her. Now alone, I sigh into the darkness. Kudusu is absolutely right. I can't think of a single way to save them both. I'm a fool. And yet, I have to try. But this time, I won't have Kudusu's help. I have to fight the universe alone. How do I save both Kudusu and Maori? I can't use D-mail. Too much could go wrong. I don't want to make the same mistakes again. In the end, all I can do is time leap. Time leap, he can't save Maori, but at least he can delay her death. Give me time to find a solution. On this world line, Maori dies half past seven on the night of August 17th. It's about 26 hours from now. My battle has no end in sight. If only Suzaha were here, I could have asked her for advice. But even alone, I must find a way. So resolved, I start time leaping again to save Maori. 
I've done this before. When Maori died the first time at Moika's hands, I tried helping or time leaping to prevent her death. But I only tried running away that time. This time, I try every approach I can think of. I try hiring bodyguards to protect Maori. I try taking Maori to South America, an entire world away from Japan. I try crippling CERN with attacks on their servers, the ones that don't need the IBM 5100. I try getting Maori admitted to a hospital. It's hard, given Maori's perfect health, but I manage. My goal is to keep her from dying by heart attack. I try everything I can possibly imagine. However, every plan fails. Mary dies again and again and again. Sometimes it's murder and sometimes it's an accident. But every time I leap, Mary dies. Maybe it really is impossible to resist fate. As long as I remain on this world line, Mayori can't be saved. Fate will kill her every time. From Mayori's perspective, she only dies once. But I've seen her die dozens of times. All because of me. Well, also she has dreams too. We still saw that scene where she was talking about how she saw it in dreams and stuff. So we know that. But I guess she only dies once. I don't know. And yet it no longer affects me as it used to. Little by little, I have grown desensitized to her death. In the beginning, I felt unbearable pain every time I saw her die, and murderous rage towards the ones responsible. And now I feel nothing. The realization stuns me. After dozens of leaps, I finally realized what should have been obvious from the beginning. I never leap back more than 26 hours. Why? I could go back as far as the August 11th, one whole week into the past. Yet I never do. Why? Because if, because I know that even if I do, nothing will change. I don't believe anything will change. Every time Maori dies, I find myself thinking, another failure. What went wrong this time? I calmly analyze Maori's death, and then take my data and head for the time leap machine with a sigh, like a gamer forced for the umpteenth time to restart a particularly difficult stage. I'm going through the motions. I didn't even realize up until this moment how routine it had all become. Now that I have, my actions suddenly seem meaningless. I can't take another step. And that's how I find myself here sitting motionless in front of the time loop machine. I've been staring at it for hours. When we got caught in the evening in that evening shower on the Radicon rooftop, my clothes got soaked. But now they're completely dry. My body temperature has dropped, but I don't have the energy to warm myself with a shower. I sluggishly get to my feet and pick up the headset. The sight of it fills me with resignation. Resignation, that's all. There's no desperate drive to save Maori. No hope this time I might succeed. Those emotions are long gone. In truth, they've been gone, they've been gone since my argument with Kudasu. Deep down, I always knew she was right. I pretended not to see it. I told myself that the time leap machine could solve everything. But that was just an excuse. A last attempt to satisfy my ego. In the end, all I'm doing is running away. I turn around in surprise, and there I see Kudasu standing in the doorway. I thought she never wanted to see me again. Why is she here? Why? Kudasu ignores my question, and then fixes me with her usual glare. Time, leap Time looping is just running away. Oh. You don't have to tell me. I already know. I know all too well. In the end, all I'm doing is running away. Running from responsibility. Running from the decision. 
If I had known I would have to make this choice, then I would have refused Suzuha when she entrusted me with her mission. I've hurt people. Lots of people. Just to save Mayori. And yet, I don't even feel guilty anymore. I feel like I'm losing my humanity. Then why are you hesitating now? Maybe because, maybe because my insurance, the time leap machine, isn't effective. Or maybe I just haven't mastered it yet. Maybe I haven't tapped into its full potential. Running only makes it hurt more. She suddenly looks away. Then she leans against the wall and smiles, smiles bitterly. I should know. Is Kurusu running too? From what? Look. <laughs> look at yourself, Okabe. You look like you've aged a decade. Your heart can't take it anymore. You don't need to beat yourself up like this. Just accept the truth. Like I said, you can't stay here. Go to the Beta World Line. Go to the world where Mayori doesn't die. Not just for your sake, but for mine as well. She's right. I have no other options left. No more D-mails. No more time leaps. There's no perfect world where both Kurusu and Mayori live. Maybe there are things I've yet to try, but I'm certain that all of them will end in vain. As long as I stay on this world line, Mayori will die. And if I go to the beta world line, Kurusu will die. We'll never be able to talk like this again. It's only been 20 days since we met, and yet... Memories of Kurusu flash before my eyes. Hey, I remember this. <笑>えー、クリスティーナ。私たち So much has happened these past 20 days. We argued, we exchanged insults, we made incredible discoveries together. And when confronted with the implications, we shared our fears. Whenever I hit a dead end in my struggle to save Mayori, I always turned to Curtis Sue for help. She always listened. She always believed me. And I helped her too, when she was distraught over her father. We promised to go to Amori together. Without the girl genius on our side, we would not have the time leap machine. Proud, passionate, 
Makase Kurusu, always strong, or at least pretending to be. A little nosy, too, and serious to a fault. Before I knew it, she had become the center of the lab. From the very beginning, I was attached to her radiant confidence. I found myself mesmerized by her every gesture, hanging on her every word. I listened enraptured by whatever, whenever she presented her latest theory. And at the end of the day, the reason I never called her by her name was because I was too embarrassed. I admired her. I longed for her. And I didn't want to admit it to myself. Only now do I realize the truth. I love her. And that's why I want so desperately to save her. She's not just a fellow lab member. To me, Kurisu is far more than that. And yet, I have no choice. In the end, everything she said was right. I can't save you. Aww. In a desperate attempt to hold back my tears, I bite my lip tightly. The taste of blood spreads through my mouth. Why does it have to be you? Why? I pound my fist on the table. Silence. Nothing moves. Outside the window is only darkness. Is that what it's like to be the only person left in the world? Is this? Hey, Okabe. Once you go to the beta world line, Mayori and Hashida will forget the time we spent together, right? Kurisu's cheeks start to redden, and she turns away. Will you remember me? Her voice is barely a whisper. Of course I'll remember you. Of course I will. There's no way I could ever forget the girl most important to me. D you mean... What the hell are you saying? The truth. But, but proof. I need proof. You ca I can't come up with a formula otherwise. Kurisu is getting flustered for some reason. When the anterior pituitary gland hyposecretes HCT... Oh my. We can assume an infinite... Hasdroff dimension for the Hilbert curve. That is, we can measure the asymptotic line with the precision. Uh, you're making me work. Tomography. Kurisu. Kurisu. <laughs> I speak her name. Our eyes meet. Whatever. Okay. I loved you. Jesus. <gasps> Dance. Kurisu looks away. Her face is bright red. Oh my well. And you? <laughs> what? Oh my well. Do you uh Some... how do you feel about me? Do you, you want to know? <laughs> Kurisu suddenly looks at me straight in the eye. Her face is still red, but her expression is firm. She walks straight up to me, grabs me by the collar, and jerks me towards her. Aw, oh, this is the cutest picture ever. Close your eyes. This is the cutest picture ever. Did I make her mad? Perhaps Kudasu hates me for some reason. 
Maybe she really did mean all those insults she said to me. That would be really sad. I slowly lick my trembling lips and timidly try to ask a question. Why close my... Just shut up and close them. I do as I'm told, though I still don't know why she's so angry. My collar is still in Kudusu's grip. <laughs> Abruptly, I feel a soft sensation against my lips. The faint scent of citrus tickles my nose. When I open my eyes in surprise, oh, I see Kudusu's face, scant millimeters away. And then I understand what has happened. Ah, oh, yo, this should be a desktop picture. That needs to be my desktop picture. That's crazy. Her lips are very... Aw, she's so cute. Her lips are very warm. My mind goes blank. She's been so cute. And I'm, I'm unable to think. I want to stay like this forever. But soon, our lips will separate. I know the feeling, dude. Aw. <laughs> Kudusu looks down shyly. It, it's not like I did it because I wanted to or anything. It's just you promised that you wouldn't forget about me. Research shows that memories are harder to forget when coupled with intense emotions. <laughs> You're a virgin and a perv, so I was sure you had an elaborative rehearsal on your first kiss, instantly making it a long-term memory you'd never forget, so... I think I already know what it means based on context. Short-term to long, yeah. I just don't want you to forget about me, Okabe. No matter what. My heart fills with love for Kurosu as she makes her frantic excuses. What a relief. Kudusu wasn't mad. She was just trying to hide her embarrassment. I want to be with her even more. I want to talk with her even more. I want to learn even more about her. But I know that wish can never come true. My chest tightens. I feel like I'm suffocating. Desperate to keep my emotions under control, I place my own hands on top of Kudusu's, which are still grabbing my collar. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. That wasn't my first kiss. What? You... You're just a cherry boy. Shut up, virgin. I remember playfully kissing Mayori in elementary school. <laughs> and just a little while ago. I forcibly kissed Moeka to silence her. But that was on another world line. Now it never happened, so... I guess it doesn't count. So it wasn't your first. Right. So it only left a weak impression. Probably not enough to become a long-term memory. <laughs> I'm lying, of course. I never felt such an intense kiss as that. The shock was like a lightning bolt to the brain. But still, I'm lying. Because if I miss this opportunity, I'll never be able to touch Kodosu again. This is my last chance. So, once more. Kodosu fidgets. She usually glares at me harshly, but now she's avoiding my eyes. I don't want to ever forget. So let's make doubly sure. I decide to take the initiative. I wrap my arm gently around Kudusu's waist and pull her slender body against mine. Then I guess there's no choice. 
Kudasu looks up at me shyly. Just a kiss. Okay. What is she wor what is she worried I'll do? But be gentle. Okay. I run my fingers softly through her hair. Then I slowly bend down. Okay. Aww. We're both shy, so I end up pecking at each other's lips like two small birds. <laughs> then we draw back and look at each other. Kudasu's eyes are wet, tears running down her cheeks. I kiss them away. Aww. They're salty. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget me. We press our lips together again. Stronger than the first time. Longer than the first time. I never want to let go. We embrace each other tightly. Our feelings too powerful to contain. <laughs> oh. We seek each other's warmth again and again. Locked in our embrace, we feel each other's breath. We feel each other's scent. Interesting. We feel each other's taste. It's too fast. Kudusu's whisper resonates through our embrace. Time is going by too fast. I could really use a word with Einstein right now. Time is not absolute. Einstein proved that time could be fast or slow depending on the observer. Hey, Okabe. The theory of relativity is so romantic. It's so sad. Don't you think? How does Kodosu feel about me? In the end, she never really answered my question. <laughs> Early morning, Akibara Station. Kodosu is standing before the entrance with her huge suitcase beside her. She waves to me shyly as I approach. Then she blushes and shoots me her usual glare. After that kiss, Kudasu went back to her hotel to pack. That suitcase must hold everything she brought to Japan. She's going back to America. Well then. Are you sure I shouldn't call Mayori or Daru? I think that would just make it harder. But I have no trouble leaving behind. But you will have no trouble leaving behind. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. Kudasu looks like she's about to cry. I'm sure I look just as sad. But I won't cry. I don't have that right. <sighs> this is a souvenir. Take it. I hand her future gadget number two. The bamboo helicam. It's a bamboo helicopter equipped with a CCD camera which allows it to record video in the air. A truly groundbreaking intervention. But sadly, due to its constant high-speed rotation, the video it produces tends to cause motion sickness. Uh, no thanks. Just take it. It's not even that bulky. I wanted to give her future gadget number seven, Ghost in the Ball, but it was too big. <laughs> Kudasu accepts bamboo helicam with a strained smile. Oh, fine. I guess I'll take it. And then silence. No words of farewell. We just look at each other. Sorry I couldn't go with you to Amori. Yeah. These two weeks were fun. In their own way. Give my regards to Mayori and Hashida, okay? 
Kurisi spreads her arm wide. Without a moment's hesitation, I step forward and embrace the girl genius one last time. Okabe. Hang in there, Okabe. Genki de. Stay well. Kurisi smiles faintly, then turns and walks towards the entrance with suitcase in hand. I watch her go, unable to move a muscle. I want to stop her. I want to wrap my arms around her and tell her to stay with me forever. But I can't. This is what we decided. To save Maori. To save the future. I'm sorry, Kurisu. I can't save you. Kurisu will disappear. She'll be left behind on this world line. There is no place for her in the coming world. I will remember you, Makise Kurisu. I will remember your warmth. I will never forget. I don't know whether Kurisu hears my words. She keeps walking. Stride steady. Back straight. Long, silky hair fluttering in the wind. She's quickly fading into the distance, but I can tell. I see her shoulders tumbling. Aww. That's the saddest thing when you can't see somebody cry, but you know we will never meet again. Our world lines will never cross again. I have to instill it in my mind, dude. I'm glad I met you, Kurisu. I would have been lost without you. I love you. Goodbye. I stand there in the entrance as the commuters file past, until long after she has vanished from sight, afraid that any motion, any thought, may cause tears to fall. The time has come. We will now commence the final operation. Maori and Daru turn to me and Nan. Today is the last day of Komima. Daru wanted to attend. So this is the same. I'm going to press skip. And we're going to see if it stops at any point. No, it's not the same. Today is the last day of Komima. Daru wanted to attend, but of course, a little begging convinced him to prioritize the operation take a look around the lab. These 20 days have been madness. It's incredible to think that at one point, this lab had a whole eight members. Now we're back to three. The memories we made, the experiences we shared. To save Maori, I will undo them all. There is sorrow in me and guilt. I engraved them deep inside my heart. I'll never forget, I mustn't forget, these long yet short summer days. But still, I choose to erase our memories. I choose to return everything back to normal. Suzuha's mission is irrelevant. I'm not doing this for the future. As long as Maori lives, nothing else matters. Dar, you may begin. You sure? Yeah. Okidoki! Okie dokie. Daru starts typing on the IBAN 5100. It's already connected to his main computer. This will get us into certain central database. Where they keep data mine... Where they keep the data they mine with the echelon. I think I messed that up the first time too. They will locate the first email I sent on the 28th and erase all trace of its existence. With this, I can reach the beta ward line. At last. Maori will be safe. I look at Maori. She's on the couch, sitting as straight as a ramrod, with her grandmother's pocket watch pressed to her ear. She stays still, her eyes closed. Whenever Maori wants to calm down, she listens to the sound of that pocket watch. Earlier, I told Maori everything. Jesus. Yet yeah, she's come to terms with it, in her own way. The actual work, I've left to Daru. No problem there. 
while waiting him for to finish, I walk into the development room. In the center of the room is the time loop machine. I squat down and gently brush my fingers against the microwave surface. It's cool to the touch. I've made irreplaceable friends because of this thing. Because of this thing, I've hurt them. I don't want the blame to be. I don't want to blame the tool. It's how you use the tool that matters. And I've got to admit, it's saved me more than once. But still, once this is over, I'll destroy the time loop machine. We must never make the same mistakes again. I found it. It's really there. I don't know if you can destroy a thing that doesn't exist because we'll never be able to meet Kurosu. The email I sent? It's there? Uh, it sure is, man. Dara points to a string of characters. My name is there, followed by the message I wrote about Kurosu's death. Three lines total, each 12 characters long. This data led CERN to our doorstep. At FB's instruction, Moik and the Rounders attacked. If Suzuha is right, then by erasing this data, we will escape the attractor field Alpha, where CERN dominates the future. That'll take us to attractor field Beta. The Beta world line is within range of, it, of convergence to a future without Mayori's death. Mayori is standing next to me, gazing intently at the monitor. She grasps my hand firmly. Okay. It's okay. She looks anxious, so I pat her head to calm her down. Everything's set. One press of the enter key and that data's gone. Dyer stands up and gestures to the open seat. I leave that honor to you, Okuni. I sit down and face the keyboard. This time. This time it ends. Kurusu's face throats through my mind. I close my eyes and take a deep breath. Goodbye, Kurusu. I slowly raise my right hand and extend my Ingda's finger. Victory is at hand. Dara chooses to make cry. With unimaginable brilliance and unwavering conviction, I have defeated our vast and powerful enemy and now stand triumphant on the field of Ragnarok. I give thanks to the comrades whose sacrifice made this victory possible. One press of this key, and Kudasu will die. I firmly grip my coat by the shoulder where it has been stitched together with a jagged pink thread. The coming world. It's the world I wish for. I wish for Maori to live and Kurosu to die. That is the truth, and I must never forget it. This is the choice of Steins Gate. This is the choice of Okabe Rintaro. Let the world be reborn. I swing my index finger. At that exact time, or same time, I hear the lab door open. Oh, this is new. My eyes dart towards the sound. <laughs> what? There in the doorway stands Kudasu. Her face is flushed. Was she running? Why is she here? She should be on her way to the airport right now. Kudasu is looking at me. Her eyes were glistening, but her face is all smiles. Did she come back for me? In a split second of frozen time, I imagine I hear her voice. We didn't say goodbye, she says. Immediately afterward. What? My finger strikes the enter key. No. We didn't say goodbye. Yo, we should have just freaking. Oh my god. I don't want to warp now. Kudasu. 
Dar. Miori. Everything in the lab is shifting. Color fades as my consciousness leaves this world line. I turn to face Kudasu, desperate to burn this last sight of her into my eyes. She raises her hand. Sayonara. Goodbye. Oh my goodness, that is the saddest thing. Oh. Oh. The world gradually stops spinning. Little by little, color returns. I look to the door. She was standing there. Just a moment ago, my assistant, Christina, <laughs> Makase Kudasu. Now she is gone, vanished like a dream. I look around the room. Next to me is Daru. Behind me is Maori. Everything is where it should be. Looks like nothing has changed at all. I gently touch my cold shoulder. Or could as you fix the torn seam? It's gone. My coat isn't torn. The stitches, uneven from having been sewn in the dark, have disappeared. There's no trace of that ridiculous pink thread. I stand up and head into the development room. Underneath the table, the time loop machine. No, that's not the time leap machine. That's the phone wave name subject to change. The upgrades Kudusu made are gone. Nothing has changed. This world is exactly the same. In all respects, save one. Kudusu was never here. Every trace of her has vanished. Kudasu is nowhere now. Nowhere except in my memories. Maori and Daru are looking at me. No. Hey, uh, lab member zero zero one. who was lab member zero zero four again? I need to ask. Even though I know what the answer will be. Green, there is no fourth lab member. Remember? Are you going to introduce a new member? Requesting cute girl. No. I knew it would be like this. But the fact they forgot her existence is so saddening. So frightening. I am the only person in the world who remembers Makase Kudasu as lab mem number four. So I won't forget. I alone will live with her memory engraved upon my heart. Now to proclaim my triumph. There are still things that must be done. And many sacrifices were made to get here. But despite all that, this is my victory. I have won. <laughs> Mayor and Dari stare at wonder at my abrupt laughter. The last battle of Ragnarok is won. I, the insane mad scientist Hoin Kilma with an IQ rivaling that of Einstein himself, have thwarted the organization, outsmarted CERN, and conquered the whole of space and time. Now, at the moment of my triumph, I stand before you as a god. This brave new world is the fruit of my ambition. The hatred system shall collapse, and chaos shall rule the earth. This, truly, is the choice of Steins. Maori suddenly throws her arms around me. I freeze, utterly taken aback. Dara looks as confused as I am. Maori looks up at me and smiles. The gentlest, gentlest smile I've ever seen. 
It's okay now. What? What are you saying? I must proclaim our glorious victory that all may. But Okarin, you look like you're about to cry. You don't have to try so hard, okay? I know you're doing it for me, but I don't want to be a burden. So you don't have to pretend anymore, okay? If you're hurting, just say so. Like normal Okarin would. But... I... You don't have to worry about Mayushi anymore. Mayushi is fine. So you can cry if you want to, okay? I don't know what happened. But it's okay to cry now. <laughs> and just like that, the mask shatters. And all it took was one word from Mayori. Mayori, the sister I never had. The girl who always needed my protection. I had to save her. That was my purpose. Even sacrifice the girl I loved. But now I realize that it's finally over. Mayori is safe. I'm free. Once more, I see Kurusu's face in my mind's eye. I recall the warmth of her body. The softness of her lips. The weight of her last words. One by one, they pound against my heart. I can't bear it anymore. Whoa, man. Are you really crying? My vision blurs. Tears run down my cheeks. I... I... A tidal wave of emotion crashes over me. Nothing re remains to hold it back. I'll never see Kurusu again. That knowledge shreds my heart. I can't hold back my sobs. I can't stop my tears. This is the world I've been searching for. A world where Maori does not die. And yet, it is the missing person most precious to me. It's too much. It's too cruel. Why did it have to be Kurusu? Why was I forced to choose? Why did she send me off with a smile? I cling to Maori. She strokes my hair gently. I surrender to my grief. Three days have passed since then, and Maori is still alive. Moik and the rounders have not attacked, and Tenoji has shown no sign of moving against us. Dara has been visiting May Queen as usual, while Maori has been working on costume designs for the next Komima. Everything is back to normal. Everything's safe for the hole in my heart. Hmm. What? That's, the end, huh? That's that. I'm standing by the dumpster up by the back of the lab. We just finished dumping the last of the trash. This morning I called Daru and together we dismantled the phone wave and the IBAN 5100. Oh, what a waste. That thing was worth a fortune. And now we don't have a microwave. How will Mayushi ever eat her juicy chicken number one? Come on, I'll get you a new microwave. You no longer need the phone wave. That miraculous time machine built by coincidence. It brought Kudusu into my life. But at the same time, it made many people suffer. It must never be used again. Not by me. Not by anyone. It's time for the phone wave to die. And with it, the insane mad scientist Hoi and Kyoma. 
lord of space and time. I recall what Kudusu once said. I don't deny who I've been, because even my failures are a part of who I am today. I've always said this. This is always the thing that I've said. Maybe not exactly worded that way. That's cool though, that I have something in common with Kudusu, the genius girl. Um, I gaze once more upon the scrap keep that was the future gadget number 8. We stripped it down to the last bolt and circuit board. Surely, no one can rebuild it now. Time travel is too much power for any one human to wield. Any human. We don't need D-mails or time leaps. Even if nothing in the future is guaranteed. Even though I may die tomorrow, life was never meant to be redone. And that's fine by me. Wouldn't you say so too, Kudasu? I look up at the sky, even though it's the middle of the day. I can see a single star shining. Maybe it's Venus. Which suddenly reminds me. Going to the past is possible right now. Look into the sky at night, and you can see how many, er, how things were tens of thousands of years ago. Every night we casually travel through time. <laughs> it's an interesting way to put it. That's what Kudusu said. In each and every word she spoke, I carve into my heart. So that I'll never let them slip from memory. For as long as my life endures. GG, motherfuckers. Alright. Um, so that's the true ending. I'm interested to see what Kudusu's ending is. I heard that you get a lot of the same scenes. So there's not much. Maybe I'll post a short video um, on that. And I know I've said goodbye, like three times, one at the first ending that I've ever received, I've said goodbye at the actual ending, and I'm about to say goodbye one more time. Thank you guys so much for watching, freaking Kudusu became my favorite person there at the end. If you even answer like, like, I avoided every single Kudusu <laughs> text message, that was insane. Like, there was text messages that I, like, I should have, like, if I would have set off one truth flag, I would have been with Kudusu. And I would, I would have gotten her ending. But I didn't set off any, and I got Maori's ending. That's insane. But I guess, like, I don't know. You'd have to, like, there's always, like, uh, three answers that you could choose in the text messages. She became the cutest person. I, um, I, I now understand why people like her so much. Uh. So suppose... Hold the phone. What? What? I can't bring up my cell phone. That would have been cool if I could just. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, なおこりんなぞの女が変わってくれってさ。わっ。誰だお願い。今すぐラジカンの屋上に来て。だから誰だよ。私は2036年から来た。そこにいる橋田イタルの娘。名前は天根鈴葉。ちょっと待て。わっ